Before we begin our study of Judeo-Christianity, I want to introduce you to a subject called Gnosticism. Gnosticism has its early roots in Judaism. According to Berger Pearson, a scholar from UC Santa Barbara, who I worked with as a graduate student, Gnosticism was a movement that started in reaction to the unfulfilled Judaic hopes. But with the advent of Christianity, Gnosticism took on Christian themes. The tradition died out when the newly forming Catholic Church labeled it a heresy and attempted to burn most of its writings. The Gnostic mystery, originally my master's thesis from UC Santa Barbara, gives a glimpse into this early form of Christianity that did not survive. The word Gnostic means knowledge. Early Christian Gnostics believed that they had the divine knowledge imparted to them by Jesus. It was knowledge for the select few who were spiritually ready to hear it. What happened to Gnosticism? While the newly forming Christian church declared it a heresy and most writings were destroyed, in the 1940s some Gnostic writings were found in the caves in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Here scholars discovered several other Gospels, other than the classic Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These Gospels are called the Gnostic Gospels, and they include the famous Gospel of Thomas, which actually predates Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Gospel of Peter, and the Gospel of Mary, etc. I studied these Gospels in graduate school at UC Santa Barbara and wrote the Gnostic Mystery as a result. Specifically in this text, I compare Gnosticism with a mystical form of Indian philosophy called the Sant tradition. Although 1,500 years apart and from totally different areas, the religious themes of these two traditions are quite similar. Let me give you an example of Gnosticism that might fascinate or perhaps offend you. Gnostics argue that the God of the Hebrew Scriptures, otherwise the Old Testament for Christians, was not divine but was demonic. They thought that this lower creator being was vengeful and petty. They taught that there was a divine being far greater than the lower creator God, and according to Christian Gnostics, this higher being was the God of Jesus. For the Christian Gnostics, Jesus was here to impart mystical knowledge, or gnosis, to select souls. He taught these elect how to meditate and access higher spiritual realms, far greater than the realm of the creator God. They also believed in reincarnation and that we will continue to be reborn until we wake up to our true divine nature from which we all come, that we are a spark of the divine. Here is one more example of Gnosticism that might stretch your traditional thinking in a different direction. For the Gnostics, instead of viewing Genesis 2, the Adam and Eve story, in a traditional way, they flipped the story upside down. Eve, for the Gnostics, is the heroine who became enlightened. She was told by the demonic creator God not to eat from the tree of knowledge, they say. Since the creator God wanted to keep her ensnared in the world of the physical and in worshiping him instead of waking up to her true divine nature and to the divine from which she came. The serpent in this version is the hero who instructed her to access the higher knowledge and to be liberated from the grips of the creator God, the lesser God. The Gnostics' reinterpretation of this classic story sheds light on their philosophy. Much like Indian philosophy that seeks liberation or moksha from this world of samsara and dukkha, that is pain, the Gnostics also seek a similar goal. The meditative techniques they offer match to a great extent that of the Sant tradition. Namaste.